Hello! Welcome or welcome back. My name is Ari and it's another 24 hour reading challenge. This weekend, as you can see by my stack right here, we are doing the oh, the Throne of Glass series. Uh, this is one of the mini Sarah J Mass series and this one is about an assassin, a royal assassin specifically. Her name is uh, Selena Sardothian, but I think at some point in the story she ends up with a different name. I guess I'll find out. Now I have absolutely no like expectation of getting through all of these books in 24 hours. These are a lot thicker than anything else I've read and um, there's what seven eight eight of them I can count uh, so I'm just going to try to get through as many of these as possible I'm expecting four maybe five but we'll see um, this is technically book one but we're starting with this which uh, I believe this is a short story collection of like various prequels to the throne of glass so this is like multiple novellas in like one collection and this is uh selena's story or stories when she was working for an assassin guild before the start of book one in this one she has already been imprisoned and she's been imprisoned for a year and gets the opportunity to get out of prison this is her story before leading up to it. I have heard mixed things about the Assassin's Blade or else the the novellas, uh, the prequel novellas. Um, I've heard a lot of people who say they're okay and I've heard a lot of people who say they're horrible so I'm not expecting a whole lot out of this. I have read this but I'm going to reread it for the purpose of this read-through. Um, but yeah, this is probably going to be a lot of talking this weekend, so I might as well get, in, get into it and I'll check back in with you once the novellas are finished. All right, I am done with the Assassin's Blade. Five hours and 33 minutes into reading, so that puts me about, about four books is what I should be able to get, which is decent for how big these books are. Anyway, this is a set of five novellas that are all prequels to the events of Throne of Glass, which will be the next book I'm reading. Um, the stories, I guess I'll just tell you a little bit about each story, make this really quick. I guess I should tell you. Before that, I should let you know that all of this video is going to contain spoilers. If I'm going to talk about these books, I can't just like make a vague reference to the fact that oh yeah, this is the next book in this series. So if you don't want spoilers for the Throne of Glass series, then thank you for spending some time with me. I'll see you in the next video. If you've already read Throne of Glass or you're fine with spoilers because you're never going to read it, then thank you for watching on. So each one of these stories, the first one starts with the Assassin and the Pirate Lord, where um, we find out that while Selena might be an assassin, she kind of has a conscience about things and one of the things that she really doesn't agree with is slavery. And so when she is sent on a mission um, from her master and finds out uh, that she is purchasing slaves, she kind of frees them all <laughs> instead of, you know, purchasing them. Um, In this book we're introduced to uh, her, or a boy who's like her partner for this event named Sam. They grew up together but apparently they've been rivals for the entire li their entire life since Sam has always been second best. Um, but th it kind of comes out that maybe um, he's a much better person than she thought he was and she likes him a lot. The next story is the Assassin and the Healer and basically for losing her master a whole hell of a lot of money by freeing a bunch of slaves instead of purchasing them, um, 
she is sent away to a different assassin school in the south um, to train basically uh, is a form of punishment and this one takes place as she's traveling. In this book she's in like the seedy inn and kind of befriends a barmaid where she helps the barmaid like learn how to defend herself and then gives her some money so she can start a new better life. The next novella is The Assassin in the Desert and this is where she's at this other assassin school. Um, in this one she learns some new assassin skills but the real point of this story is she makes her first ever friend and this is a female friend and um, it ends up that the the friend kind of betrays her and everybody else at the assassin school uh, for some stupid reason that doesn't make any sense. The next one is The Assassin in the Underworld where Selena comes back home and she is basically buying herself out of her contract to the Assassin's Guild um, and she's taking like one last contract basically. This one's very confusing because again she's being lied to and manipulated and she again doesn't realize it until far too late. Actually. She realized it with the slaves before it was too late, but this time she doesn't realize it till far too late. The main purpose of the story is her figuring out how to be with Sam, and I did appreciate the fact that this story s kind of starts out with the miscommunication trope that I hate so much, where she is so afraid of her feelings that she keeps like miscommunicating purposefully with Sam and trying to like push him away um, but he wouldn't stand for it and he was just very forthright and like called her out on all her bullshit so I appreciate Sarah J Mass not using the miscommunication trope because I probably would have hated the book completely <laughs> if I had to deal with that because I, I really hate that trope. The final novella, I don't know why novella was such a hard word to come up with right there, the final novella is The Assassin and the Empire and in this one like I have read Throne of Glass. I knew Sam had died at some point um, in her past from Throne of Glass and I knew that she had spent the last year from the beginning of Throne of Glass in um, like a prison camp and I knew she had been caught so I knew that those events had to have happened in this last novella like I knew going into that that Sam was dead and that she would be captured at the end of it and of course I was right that was really what that was about I think that knowing Sam was dead going into that book kept me from like being really emotional about it because I had prepared myself for it. <laughs> um, so, but it was very interesting to like read like a little bit about her life and then her capture before the events of um, Throne of Glass because once you get into Throne of Glass you know that she's been an assassin for her entire life which to be fair this like segues me well into like a good point or a, a point that I'm about to make about this entire series. Um, Selena is 17 years old and she is the best assassin ever. The plot of these books don't make one freaking ounce of sense. Like do not read these books because you want good world building or a really strong fantasy plot like you're not getting those in this series but the story's fun like it's not award-winning literature but this is a really fun story it's a really easy fun read that's just straight up enjoyable. Selena is the type of character where she is girly but she's also an assassin. She also has a shitty personality and I love unlikable female characters. They are my favorite kind of characters. So that combination of being like 
super girly but still gonna kick your ass very very much appeals to me the fact that she doesn't literally give two fucks what anybody thinks about her really appeals to me in a character if characters like that don't appeal to you then you're not gonna like this series at all like not at all at all uh, because there's nothing else other than like the stupid fun of the story and then her as a character that like give you anything. Anyway, I am going to do a quick reread of this one. Um, this one, four stars, decent enough. I enjoyed my time reading this. I ain't mad right now. But we'll go back into Throne of Glass. I think I gave Throne of Glass either a three or four stars the first time I read it. I remember enjoying it um, mostly for her personality and thinking that the plot of this book was incredibly stupid but super fun which I'm fine with. <laughs> I'm perfectly okay with reading that. All of this 24-hour readathon is just reading like her being a girly badass and smut. So I will check back in with you once I finish with Throne of Glass and give you a quick recap about what that was about as soon as I refresh my memory. All right, I am done with Throne of Glass. Um, I'm a little bit over 10 hours in. I didn't bring my phone here with me and I'm too lazy to get up and go grab it again. But just trust me that I'm a little bit over 10 hours in. So Throne of Glass was meant to be like an introduction to the characters. Like this was originally the first book written, I just read the novellas first. Um, so this is supposed to be an introduction to Selena and the crown and the universe and everything and I think it does a pretty decent job. Um, as far as world building there's not a whole lot of it. We do learn a little bit about the magic that kind of exists but kind of doesn't exist in this world. Basically, the king uh, outlawed magic, um, I want to say, many, many years ago. <laughs> I don't exactly remember, but like, I don't know, 10 or 6, something like that years ago. And after the king outlawed magic, magic kind of like disappeared from the world. But apparently there are types of magic that still work. Um, and that kind of slightly shows up in this book but not really. This book is kind of like what's that show called? America's Next Top Model but for assassins. <laughs> uh, basically Selena has been in a prison camp for a year um, for doing or for being like you know the the assassin uh, the greatest assassin in whatever the country is called, which I keep forgetting. Um, and that was covered in the novella. <clears throat> that was covered in the book of novellas that I read before this. But um, the crown prince pulls her out of this prison in exchange or and ask her to participate in a competition of or to become the king's champion, which is basically the king's assassin. And in exchange for her winning the competition and being the king's champion for four years, she will gain her freedom. If she doesn't win or fails to uphold her four years or whatever, she will be sent back to this prison. It's basically a death camp. The average um, amount of time somebody lives there is a month and she's been there for a year already so she doesn't obviously doesn't want to go back. And um, this basically covers like her time getting to know the prince, getting to know the captain of the guard. Um, there's a princess from a foreign country that she becomes really good friends with and then she's going through her trials but also the other champions or other potential champions are being killed off by some sort of magic creature. The plot has holes. Like I am not saying this is a work of art but it 
sure as shit is entertaining. I still love Selena's personality. It makes me very happy. Um, that alone would probably keep me reading the books, if nothing else. Um, so I, I'm enjoying this. Like, brainless fun kind of enjoying, not like this is a masterpiece of literature. But I don't think it's meant to be a masterpiece of literature. Not all books have to be like highly intelligent. They can just be fucking entertaining and this is fucking entertaining. Um, as far as the smut that apparently Sarah J Maas is known for, <laughs> um, I haven't really read much Sarah J Maas, so I can't say. Uh, there's there's no smut in here. Selena is still virginal. Um, the most smutty thing that happens is she makes out with people in both books. She made out with Sam in the novellas and now she's been making out with the crown prince in this book. Um, I, I personally like her better with the captain of the guard and not the crown prince. The crown prince could use to get his heart broken. Definitely. So I like her with the Captain of the Guard better. I hope she ends up with him. Just saying. Um, anyway, getting into uh, Crown of Midnight next. Now this, for some reason, my copy of Crown of Midnight is a completely different edition than all of my other books. It is considerably smaller in size, if you can see like up here. Um, and it's a completely different color because everything else is dark and this is like white and it's older. Like you can see how the pages are kind of gross on this one. I, I, I don't know why this one is completely different. I did order all of these secondhand. Um, this one is an old copy that I already owned, but all of the other books I ordered secondhand, and this was the only one that came looking secondhand, so. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and jump into this. I don't really know what it's about. At the end of Throne of Glass, uh, she had basically just signed on to become the King's Assassin, because of course she won, or the King's Champion, really the King's Assassin, um, because she had just won the tournament, and basically he threatened the king who is not, king is not a good guy, king is bad guy. <laughs> no one knows the king's a bad guy except for the reader, but we all know the king's the bad guy. And he basically told her that if she doesn't, if she argues with him, if he doesn't do exactly what he instructs her to do, or if she tries to run away, he will murder all of her friends excluding his son, but he'll murder the captain of the guard and he'll murder the princess that is um, Selena's other friend. So we know he's going to ask her to do things that she doesn't want to do probably in this book and then she's going to like war with herself whether she actually does it on threat to her friends or whether she tries to save people. So we'll see where this goes. I'll report back into you once I'm done with this one. Okay, I am finished with A Crown of Midnight. Um, this one was a little bit more boring than the last one. I, I don't know, it's kind of Selena's and I can't pronounce his name so I'm gonna call him Guard Boy. Um, it, it's like their romance for the first half and then her best friend dies and she blames it on him not telling her stuff and then they fight for like the second half of the book until like the big conclusion of everything at the end. Um, I was basically bored the second half of the book and a lot of it was like, it was kind of the miscommunication trope that I hate so much. It wasn't like bad. Um, I probably would have thrown the book across the room if it was really bad, but a lot of times she just like refuses to communicate, thus creating misinformation, and then he's just like, she doesn't want me to talk to her, so I'm not gonna talk to her, and I'm just like, fucking, she wants you to talk to her, she's not saying it, and you just need to man up and do it. So I was annoyed by that. Um, what happens in this book? Uh, the king... Obviously we know he's the big bad guy and he has these things called like word stones, W-Y-R-D, and 
he uses he used those to destroy magic ten years ago, and um, only his magic still exists. So the crown prince, who is the other the the tr third point in the tr love triangle here, um, he still has magic because he has his father's magic. You know, loops, and um, there's this. <laughs> I'm just going to say Sarah J Maas is not very good if she's trying to keep these plot twists secret. <laughs> There's this stupid hint throughout the book about the uh, lost princess of Therisen and that Selena is not necessarily who everyone thinks she is. Um, and it's just, it's hinted at so many times that it's stupid obvious that Selena is this Aelin girl. And I knew Selena had like a second name, but I didn't know it was Aelin. But obviously that's who Selena is. She's this Aelin girl and she is the true heir of the, um, you know, realm. And she was attempted at like age eight. Uh, her entire family was assassinated. She was thrown into the river, obviously survived and was adopted by the king of the, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? The king of the assassins, and then was raised to be an assassin as Selena Sardarthion. And the reason that she's the world's best assassin is because she's a uh, fae and not human. She's just a shape-changing fae who can shape-change between being human and fae, and with magic gone, she's stuck looking like a human. Ta-da! That's the big plot twist of the book. <laughs> um, but yeah, like I said, it was okay. It just wasn't as good as the last book. It's still like brain dead and the plot's all over the place. But the actually, like, the pacing's, like, super fast. A lot of stuff is constantly happening, and there's not really a dull moment. I just got bored with their relationship about halfway through the book once they started fighting again. Um, and being a young adult romance, or new adult, I guess is probably what I'd put it, this one as, because they started having sex in this book, um, it gets real boring <laughs> with the um or it gets it relies very heavily on the whole relationship aspect of everything so all in all okay not great hopefully it picks up with the second or the next book um at the end of this book selena is sent off to assassinate the king and his heir of a different country and the place she is being sent to is right next to her grandmother's kingdom and her grandmother is the queen of the fae. This is probably a really boring vlog because most of it is like yeah it's all right <laughs> but we're gonna continue on with the yeah, it's all right into Air of Fire. I have not looked at the time. I don't know how much time I have left, but I'm guessing this is the last book I'm going to be able to get through. This is a thick one. How many pages is this? This is 565 pages, so it's not, not a small boy. Um, I think this is probably going to be the last book, but We'll find out once I'm done with this. Alright, I am a few minutes past the 24 hour mark. I have finished Air of Fire, and if this book were a spice, it would be mayonnaise. <laughs> I was so bored for this entire book. Like, just immensely, incredibly bored. So. What is this about? What happens in this whole ass book? So first, at the end of the last book, Selena was sent across the sea to a different continent to assassinate like a king and his heir. And we open up this book where she's over there and she just like became emo. Like, I don't, 
I don't know what had happened, but it doesn't, it, it doesn't make any sense. She's just like depressed and she's like, my life is over. Everything's miserable. And she's like living as like a street waif. And it, it didn't, it was like, all of like the character progression was just like reverted back to whatever her old bullshit was so we could do the character progression again. <laughs> um, that plot line of her assassinating whomever is quickly forgotten and she ends up in a community of demi fae, uh, d demi elves, is that what they're called? whatever, half-elves, and uh, she is training to use her magic with a full elf so she can gain access to the elven court and ask her aunt Maeve, uh, who's the ruler of the elves, for... ask her, like, how to destroy the, the stone thingies that the big bad is using to get rid of magic in her uh, world, or country. Same world, but different country. Um, and so you've got that plot line. Rowan is the guy who is training her, and he... I get he's trying to train her, but he's an abusive asshole. Like, <laughs> I see a lot of people in book reviews, like, shipping him hard and being like, oh, I wish that he was, or I wish that they were in love and he's such a better guy for her than guard boy. He beats the shit out of her multiple times and like completely just mentally and physically abuses her under the guise of training and because he thinks that she's a spoiled rotten child. Uh, <laughs> And then he only becomes, like, a good guy when she, or he finds out that she has been enslaved, because he didn't know that. And it was one of those things where it's just like, this guy isn't a good guy. Um, there's no romance. Uh, they're, like, BFFs, uh, and they're, like, very close with each other, but there's absolutely no romance. Um, at least not yet, not in this book. There might be down the line, but if she and Guard Boy don't get back together, I'm gonna be pissed. Because <laughs> it's the only relationship that I care about. He actually has treated her fairly decently, or at least like a human fucking being since the beginning. Even when he didn't like her, he was still, like, good to her. Like, he never, like, beat the shit out of her. <laughs> so I don't understand that, that thing that people on the internet are talking about. Um, the other perspective we have is Guard Boy and Prince Boy back in her home country. I don't remember any of these names. I remember Selena's name and I can't pronounce Guard Boy's name and the Prince... I don't remember his name. It doesn't matter. <laughs> um, they have this thing like Their plotline was so boring. It was basically them, like, doing rebellion things. Well, the prince falls in love with a healer, um, because he apparently is attracted to broken women, and this, he falls in love with a healer. Uh, huge spoiler alert, she's killed at the very end of the book, so that relationship's not going anywhere. Um, and then, he and Guard Boy aren't talking, but Guard Boy is kind of hanging out with Selena's cousin um, and helping him with, like, the rebellion. Even though he's, like, the entire time he's like, I don't think I'm going to help with rebellion. I don't want to be part of this. And then he does everything to help with the rebellion. It was, it was a boring. It was boring. I hated it. Um, and then the third plot line was from a witch, and it was like a character we've never seen before. Her name was Menon, I think, and she is an evil witch, and she works for the bad guys, and it was kind of like her story of, uh, 
like getting a, 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 a hippogriff, is that what it was? Some sort of like flying creature um, and like training with it. And I don't particularly like stories from the bad guys perspective because they don't really seem like it's hard to write bad guys as just as evil as they need to be and still make them interesting. So maybe her story is like a redemption arc thing because she just keeps telling us like how heartless she is the whole time um, in her inner monologue and then does things that don't even seem like remotely heartless at all. <laughs> so it's one of those. Uh, overall, mayonnaise. Just, I was so bored. If if there was any time left in the 24 hour readathon, I would be like, I don't want to read anymore. But fortunately, I am done. I have four books left. I will probably try to read those eventually. I'm not in any big rush for it right now. And I will probably spread them out over time instead of trying to do more in 24 hours because honestly like after reading this book I'm like not at all enthralled with the previous books that I've read and like the plot holes and all of that stuff are like very very much shining through and it's like why does anybody like this but I think that <laughs> like I obviously liked this when I started so I think it's just like for me it's very character driven narrative and nothing about the characters in this book was something I like or not character driven for me it's a very like character relationship driven narrative and I'm not enjoying how the characters relationships are dealt with in this book so I was very meh and bored about this because the plot of this book is definitely the plot of the whole series is definitely not doing anything for anybody so that's that I am done that is the last of my weekend 24 hour reading vlog things uh, <laughs> I am very happy to be done with this and I will catch you in the next video bye